Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Bialik College B'nai Mitzvah Ceremony. Like so many elements of our lives this year, our B'nai Mitzvah program and this ceremony will take place with a very different flavour. Our students have developed their B'nai Mitzvah journey into a digital storybook of sorts that will introduce us to the wonderful families that make up our Year 7 Kehila. Our students and staff have demonstrated tremendous resilience through their eagerness to adapt their stories and presentations to a format that we can all enjoy. So this year, in the comfort of your own home, we ask you to sit back and enjoy the digitised journey of the 2020 Bialik College B'nai Mitzvah. Tonight is the culmination of a seven month long process, going back to the very first week of the school year. Since then, our wonderful Year 7 cohort, your child or grandchild, niece or nephew, sibling or cousin, have spent many months learning all about the history of their families. They have spent countless hours creating family trees, interviewing family members, collating documents, and creatively representing their family to create family heirlooms that will be treasured for years to come. In February, we had the privilege of having members of the Australian Jewish Genealogical Society come and speak to us and help us with our research into our family's past. What we found out is that not only was this a year level full of kind, caring, talented, intelligent, funny and creative individuals, but also many of them are related to each other. Of course, there are the Glassman and Gomo twins. But on top of that, Woody Wiseman and Hope Krongold are cousins. Ava Wilson is related to Toby Musick Harry Naftali and Dylan Swart. Noel Klein is related to James Deegan, Hugo Krasenstein, Benji Bedder, Jasmine Mamoff and Lara Zohar. And on top of that, Lara is also a descendant of the Vilna Gaon. What an incredibly connected year level. Our theme for B'nai Mitzvah this year is Gesher, or Bridge. Our students discussed how a bridge is something that connects pieces of land together, helps us overcome obstacles and displays human ingenuity. Each student has connected a family member to the theme of Gesho, Some, someone who has overcome obstacles, brought people together, or displayed incredible ingenuity. This year, due to the changed circumstances of our ceremony, the students will be sharing these wonderful stories, not only through a speech, but also with a video that they have created. These speeches and videos are the heart of our B'nai evening. They are the culmination of the Roots Project and help us understand each family's past. 
Every family has a story. Every family has a legacy which guides them. Let us hear where our year sevens have come from and what that means to them. Hello everyone, good evening and I would like to tell you about a person that I believe resembles the theme for this year's Bnei Mitzvah of Gesha. But what does it mean to cross a bridge? The ability to cross a Gesha is to overcome those moments where it looks as if you're walking across a very narrow bridge and a wrong step would lead you to your fall. Life is all about the unpleasant moments that help appreciate the better ones. And like Frank A. Clark said, if you can find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead anywhere. The person who I have chosen that resembles the theme of Kesha is my mom. She has overcome multiple obstacles throughout her life. And when she told me about them, I thought to myself, wow, how did she not give up? An example of this is when my grandmother passed away and my mom had to mourn while raising me and being pregnant with my sister Mika. And right after mother's passing, my grandfather got diagnosed with prostate cancer, which led to his passing five years later. To this day, she is still fighting, living in a country where English is not a first language and I doubt she will ever stop. Strength isn't what you can do. It is what you overcame that you once thought you couldn't. Hi, my name is Liam Gasper and I'll be sharing the story of my great grandmother, Mary Pelsman. Mary was born in Paris in 1929. Her parents were born in Poland but immigrated to France before Mari's birth. Mari is a younger sister called Jacqueline. In these photos, Mari is on the left and Jacqueline's on the right. On our Shoreshin journey, we discovered that Mari had an older brother, Mendel, that passed away three days after his birth. In 1940, during the invasion of Paris by the Nazis, the family was forced to wear the yellow Jewish star on their clothes. Her mother was scared and took her to the country to stay on a farm. Mari's mother would visit her weekly, but one week she never came back. In 1943, her parents were deported to Grancy and to Auschwitz and were never heard from again. In 1945, when the war ended, Mari found a cousin who survived that offered her to go to Australia to start a new life. The journey on the boat, Wilder Ams, was a geshe or bridge from her old life in Paris to a new beginning in Australia. She hoped that she would be able to make new connection in a foreign country, especially because she didn't speak English. It was in Australia that she met her husband, Maurice, had two children, six grandchildren and four great-grandchildren, and made an amazing life. She's currently 91, living happily in Melbourne today. Unfortunately, during this coronavirus pandemic that we are all living through, I miss her a lot and hope that we will be reunited very soon. My name is Rafi Kallenbach. The whole entire world is a very narrow bridge, and the main thing is to have no fear at all. Rabbi Nachman of Breslau. My auntie, Lauren, has always lived on a very narrow bridge. In her early childhood, she was diagnosed with autism. At this time, autism wasn't well understood. Imagine this is your life. You have no friends, you struggle at school, you find it difficult to communicate with others. People around you see you as different. That's how Lauren experiences autism. Lauren was always expected to have a difficult life. She would be lonely, different and dependent. At school, she was teased by her classmates. They didn't understand her. I was only feeling with the teachers because they were adults and were easy to communicate with. That's what Lauren says. But as we have come to see, Lauren has persevered through her condition and lives a life unexpected. 
Autism has gifted Lauren an unintended humour and brutal honesty. Her Italian neighbours lived in fear of the mafia for years because of the pork recipes that she would anonymously place in their mailbox. As an adult, Lauren lives independently. She works and has responsibility for herself. Lauren still requires family to check in on her to ensure her well-being. Regardless, she lives a fearless life. Hi, my name is Toby Musik, and I'll be discussing my dad's adoption story and search for his biological family. Rob Musik was adopted at birth by Tosca and Michael Musik, my paternal grandparents. Dad always knew he was adopted, as his parents were always very open about this. He always had a desire to find his biological parents, but it wasn't until November 2018 he began this journey. In March 2019, Dad received from the government a file containing his original birth certificate and details about his biological mother. Interestingly, he found that his biological mother actually named him at, named him at birth. His original name was Adam Daniel May. Dad then tried to find his biological mother, but there was no current contact details for her. Amazingly, it, it turns out what, that the mother of one of my mum's friends in Sydney recognised the name of Dad's biological mother as someone she went to school with. The very next night, Dad received a call from his biological mother, Evelyn. They spoke for three hours. Dad discovered that he has a sister and two brothers from his mother's side. Dad also met his biological father shortly after. He has a daughter who, who my dad is still yet to meet. This journey was a huge risk for my dad, but luckily it has been very positive and I now have more aunties and uncles, grandparents and a cousin on the way. Our ancestors worked hard so that we could build a life for ourselves here in Australia. My great-grandmother Nana Marion Roth was an amazing artist who crossed the Long Bridge herself. When she left on the kinder transport, this has allowed me and my family to live our lives to the fullest. Nanana and her brother Hans were on the last kinder transport. Nana was quite young and terrified when she went on this train. In order to live, she escaped Germany and took the risk of going on this train without her parents and only with her younger brother for comfort. Taking this risk allowed her and her brother a chance to live their lives and have a future. This future involved moving to Australia, having two daughters with a husband and coup, six grandchildren, 12 great-grandchildren despite the great loss she suffered. This is the ultimate example of resilience. This project teaches us about where we have come from and our roots. Each of our ancestors have overcome challenges to create a life for us all. Having gone through the difficulties and challenges of the Geshe, which is represented by her travels from Germany all the way to Melbourne, Australia, she overcame these obstacles to create a life for herself. My Nanana's journey has shown me that whilst crossing the scariest of bridges can be difficult, it is these moments that ultimately help us mature and navigate life to its fullest. My family comes from every corner of the world. I have Russian, Ukrainian, Israeli, Spanish, Persian and Polish heritage. Jewish traditions and rituals are celebrated differently on both sides of my family, as well as from other backgrounds. The food I eat originates from various cultures, regions, countries and ethnicities. This recipe book represents my family's diversity through food, with babushka's dodos and my mum's classic recipes. Hi, I'm Naomi and this is my creative response. It's a vase with blue paper flowing out of it. The vase is covered with pictures of my family, but each picture is not complete. It contains segments and other parts of different pictures. 
This represents how my family is incomplete without one another. The blue paper flowing out of the bars represents the ocean. My family has always felt a deep connection to the ocean. My, my dad proposed there, my parents got married there, and it's always been a place of safety and love for everyone in my family. For my creative response, I chose to make passports for every family member. Then inside the passports will be information about them. Their place of birth and date of birth, their death date, their name and the country they are from. I also made a map out of a ch chalkboard canvas, cardboard and coloured paper. The countries that my family come from will be 3D and they, so they stand out. Here is a photo of me doing my creative response. Hi, I'm Lauren, and this is my creative response. It is a model earth that shows my connections or bridges between the many countries my family came from over the many, many years. My creative response resembles the liking for traveling the world I have and the interest I have for different countries that I've never been to before. For my creative response, I decided to draw the outline and flags of the countries that my family has migrated to or from. On the bottom right, you will see Europe and marked in red the countries they fled from. They are marked in red because this represents the blood from the war. In the center, you will see a foot representing the trails they left behind, a soldier's helmet and a tree's roots coming from a Magendavid. This represents how at the core of my family's foundations is Judaism. Good evening everyone. My name is Benjamin Better and I'm here to speak to you about my mother Rebecca and how resilient and strong she is. She has conquered difficult things to move forward in life. When my oldest sister Zoe was born, Zoe was very ill and had many operations, with the first one being when Zoe was 17 hours old, and it included open heart surgery at 10 days old. Zoe's had many operations and has stopped breathing many times, but my mum didn't freak out even in the ambulance. Even after her first child having so many health issues, my mum was brave enough to have two more children, myself, Benji, and my sister Maddie. My mum has taken her has taken her personal experiences and integrated them with her work. From being a lawyer and working with people with disabilities and their families at Jewish Care, my mum has shown a great understanding of what it is like for families to, that have a child with a disability. She tries to make it easier for them. My mum loves what she does and she is passionate about her, her, her work helping others. Every cloud has a silver lining, which means in every sad or bad situation, there is always a more hopeful aspect. It may not show up straight away, but it will appear to you later. Thank you and good night. Hi, I'm Jasmine Givoni. There are two ways someone could read the word Gesher. One, the Hebrew translation of a bridge. Two, the perspective in which you're crossing a narrow bridge trying to safely get on the other side. In other words, taking a risk in which there will be challenges along the way. When I think of taking risks, my great grandfather's story comes to mind. His name was Shlomo Bogarski. Around the time 1922, from moving from Poland to Israel to soon settle in Australia, came some challenges along the way. When Shlomo developed malaria in Israel, he then decided to move with his wife to Australia, where he thought he could make a good living, though financially this wasn't very easy. In order to enter Australia, he needed to pay a fee of £10, but had only saved up eight. If it weren't for his good friend giving him two extra pounds, he would have been sent back to Poland. If it weren't for this very moment, my family today wouldn't be living such an incredible life in Australia. Shoma Bogarski overcame incredible risks out of persistence and never giving up. His journey will be remembered and his gene will be forever passed on. Hi, my name is Yelden and today 
I'm going to tell the story of Shoshania Ronia Landell, my late grandmother. She was born in 1936 in Krakow, Poland. In 1939, the Germans invaded Poland and her mother made the decision to take her daughter and her sister and run away. It was a very brave decision which proved to be life-saving for her and her family. On their way to Russia, their carriage was bombed by German planes and their horse died. The sister chose to go back home, never to be seen again. My great-grandmother decided to continue their journey by foot. They met up with my great-grandfather at the Russian border, only to be sent to a Siberian war camp as suspected Polish spies. When the Germans began to attack Russia, all the Polish prisoners were released, and my grandmother's family escaped to Uzbekistan, where they spent the rest of the war. After the war ended, they made their way back to Poland searching for family, only to find there were no survivors. A few years later, they arrived in Australia as refugees. The hardships and dangers my grandmother went through throughout her family journey were just like walking across a very narrow bridge. Every step feels like it might be your last, and with every wrong move, you might fall into the abyss. For me, this is the meaning of Achaim Hemkmon Geshel Tzal Me'od. At the age of 12, my Ema moved to Israel, leaving behind family and friends in Australia. She made Aliyah to Eretz Israel. Arriving in a new country, she had to adjust to a new school, a new language, a new culture and a brand new start. Kids at the new school would often ask, where is Australia? And if she spoke the language, Australit. The kids were friendly and excited to have an Aussie in their classroom. But unfortunately for my Ima, she could not understand much Hebrew. So she was moved to the Ulpan class, the class for foreign students. After three months of being in the Ulpan class, my Ima said that she wanted to join the regular class as she had improved in her Hebrew. My Emma joined the regular class and crossed the narrow bridge with a lot of hard work and effort. She understood the language and now felt that she fit in better. This story relates to the theme Gesher as it is a journey through life. Gesher is a metaphor. The metaphor is life's journey. כדי לחקור את הנושא הזה, היינו צריכים להבין מהו בעצם גשר במקור. גשר הוא מבנה שנבנה כדי לעזור לאנשים להתגבר על מכשולים. במשפחה שלי, אנשים רבים נאלצו להתגבר על אתגרים בכדי להשיג את, את חלומות שלהם, ובמקרים מסוימים הם נאלצו להתגבר על האתגרים האלה כדי לחיות. סבתא רבא שלי, שושה, נאלצה להתחתן עם אדם זר כדי לקבל אישור גישה לישראל, מגרמניה במשך המלחמה. היא נאלצה לשקר לנאצים על מצב המשפחתי שלה כדי לחיות, וכאשר שהם סוף סוף הגיעו לישראל, הם נפרדו וסבתא רבא שלי התחתנה שוב, הפעם עם מישהו אישי אהב. אני, אני חושבת שחשוב מאוד לציין את ההקרבות וההחלטות של סבתא שלי. היא סיכנה את חייה כדי לחיות במקום שבו היא רצתה, ומתוך החסד בליבה היא גם סיכנה את חייה כדי להציל איש זר. אני מקווה שיום אחד גם אני אהיה אמיצה כמו סבתא רבא שלי, ואצליח להתגבר על אתגרי החיים, למרות הקשיים. Hello, my name is May, this is my creative response. My grandmother loved to paint, and so she painted a painting of my older sister and my mother. I always loved art and mosaicing, so when my grandmother got ill with Alzheimer's, she couldn't finish it. So a couple of years later, I decided to finish it through a mosaic. This was a very special project to me because it let me connect with my grandmother in a way I can't anymore. Hello, my name is Jonas Stolindna and this is my creative response. It is called Jonas Ancestral Upchecker and Upchecker means pharmacy. It is dedicated to Avram Trotkrinsky, who is my great-great-grandfather. 
He was a pharmacist and he was known for helping many people and that is why he survived during the war. Many people he had helped, helped him. If people could not afford the medication that he offered them, then he would say, pay it later uh, if you can't afford it. Let me show you how it works. In each test tube, there is a person and in each beaker, there is a place. It gets older from inside to the outside. This side is my dad side and this side is my mom. Let me show you an example. I'll choose me. You take it out from the test tube and then there's the writing and the picture. In mine it says, Jonas Stolindner. Jonas was born in London, UK on the 6th of February, 2008. He is a student at Bialik College in Melbourne and he enjoys watching footy, he follows Essendon and playing tennis. He's a good friend and a kind person and likes being with his friends and family. Yona loves slapstick comedy and reading. He loves to play an abundance of games, whether they are card, board or screen. So then when you put it back, you fold it up, you roll it up and then put it inside the test tube. Once it's inside the test tube, you put it back in the hole or stick where it comes from. In each beaker, there is a place, for example, Melbourne, London, Leeds. The, the big beakers are the most recent places our family has been. So it goes from Melbourne to London, to Leeds, to Warsaw, to Grodno, and then to Wroclaw. Under it, there is the family tree representing the ancestral part, which is all of it, of our family. There is a magnifying glass in case you want, if case there are small parts that you want to read. Thank you for showing interest in my Roots project, Yonas Ancestral Upchecker. My creative response for my Roots project is an artistic representation of me and my family and where my family originated from. In this creative response, I am represented by the teapot because I am made up of all my family's past generations. The tea bags represent those generations and where they have come from around the world. The tea bags are in the teapot, symbolising all those areas in the world are within me from the past generations. The tray has photos of me and my family's past generations and is a support on which the teapot sits, bridging the past to the future. Hi everyone. My creative project is based on my family's strong connection with Scouts. Left of the pocket I have my immediate family who have all been part of Scouts sometime during their life. I am happy to follow in the footsteps of my mum and dad and be involved with scouting, with my dad now being also my scout leader. There is also a Queen Scout badge, which is the highest award which my dad achieved. My dad's family is on the right sleeve of the uniform, representing my time and badges in cups. At the bottom of the sleeve, I am my cousins and their partners, representing the linking badge. On the other sleeve, I have my mum's side of the family, representing badges during scouts. I have my mum's family around the Pioneer Badge. Above the pocket, I have photos of my extended family in their scout uniform. At the bottom of the shirt, I have photos from various scout and family camps. Hi, I'm Buddy, and this is my creative response. I wanted to paint something that represents my family. This painting shows the roots, which have the synonyms of my ancestors on it. From all of these people, our family has grown, and the leaves show all of my family now. And the tree represents how we are all connected. Thank you. The song, Geshe Same Ord, 
or a very narrow bridge, was taken from the magnus opus of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, the Likutai Moharan in the early 19th century. Rabbi Nachman was one of the early leaders of the Hasidic world and taught, among other things, that it is a great mitzvah to be happy. He also emphasized the importance of music for spiritual development and religious practice. After discussing the lyrics, the whole world is a very narrow bridge, but the main thing to recall is to have no fear at all. Our students believe that there are many obstacles that we face in life and to achieve our goals, we must face them with confidence and without fear. The song will be performed by the members of the Benin Band. Amazingly, they learnt this song through Digital Bialik and recorded themselves at home, which speaks to their talent and their dedication. Romy Brunt, and I've decided to dedicate this page to my great-grandmother Ruth, who crossed many narrow bridges in her years of living, who was no longer with us. We share a very special bond of playing the piano. My great-grandmother grew up in Russia playing the piano from a very early age, and had to cross many narrow bridges in her life due to the harsh conditions in Russia, like World War II and harsh government rules. She had it harder than others because she was Jewish, so she was treated differently and found it very hard to protect her family due to their religion. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to make my great-grandmother, but I know she would be very proud of where I am today. Thank you so much for listening. Erev Tov. Shmi El Vanis Mechal Shetef Etchem Besipur Gesher Shel Saba Raba Raba Shali. פנחס מרגלית פנחס יזם והקים קיבוצים וישובים בגוש עציון עוד לפני הקמת מדינת ישראל. כאשר עלה לארץ ישראל, הוא היה עצוב מהעובדה שיהודים אינם יכולים לקנות אדמות. בשותפות עם חבריו, דוקטור ברנשטיין כהן ואהרון סולומון, וגוף שקדם לקרן קיימת לישראל, הוא הצליח לגייס תרומות במטרה לבנות גשר ליהודים שיוכלו לרכוש אדמות ולהתיישב בארץ ישראל. לאחר מאמצים רבים, הרבה כישלונות ועבודה קשה ביותר, פנחס וחבריו גאלו אדמות והקימו את כפר עציון, משואות יצחק, עין צורים ורבדים, בגוש עציון. פנחס הגשים את חלומו, הוא בנה גשר ליהודים שחלמו לחיות בארצם. ערב טוב, 
My name is Yael and I would like to share with you my great-great-grandfather Pinchas Margalit's Geshe story. When Pinchas first came to Israel, he was saddened by the fact that Jews weren't able to buy land. So being a well-established Zionist and businessman, he partnered with an earlier version of JNF and his friends, Dr. Bernstein Cohen and Aaron Solomon, to redeem the land. After tireless nights, a lot of work and many failures, they redeemed and established Kfar Etzion, Masuot Yitzchak, Ein Turim, and Revadim in Gush Etzion. Pinchas had built a Geshel for all Jews who dreamed to live in their promised land. Hi everyone, I am Buddy. The topic of this speech is Geshel, meaning someone who walked a narrow bridge and overcame the fear of doing it. My grandmother overcame a narrow bridge. My grandmother was doing the training she did in the army. Then she went on a train ride with a few of her friends. On the way to the destination, they stopped for a little break. They went to get lunch. After they finished the lunch, they went back into a taxi. After they went into the taxi, a person in the car had accidentally been shot in the arm. The person went to hospital and had severe damage in her arm. After they found that out, they took everyone that was in the taxi to the hospital for a checkup. After they did that, they found out my grandmother had gotten a severe leg injury. She found it very hard to walk. She had to be in hospital for a while and learn how to move around with a severe leg injury. So that's what my grandmother's Gesher Bridge is. She had a bad leg injury and had to learn how to walk through the pain. She overcame the fear and her leg is fine now. My name is Zachary. I'm here to tell you a story about my great grandmother, her escape from Germany, and how it connects to this ceremony's topic of Gesher et Zarmeot. When I reflect on this theme, I think that it's about taking a big risk to have a successful outcome and overcoming tough obstacles that come with life. My great grandmother's story starts in the small town of Neuwied, Germany, in the early 1930s. Her parents made the big decision to leave Germany. Leaving everything behind, except for a few belongings, ended up saving their lives. They arrived in Australia with no money, unable to speak English. Around 80 years later, my great-grandmother is surrounded by two children, five grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. With this decision, I would not be here. I chose this story because I believe it is a perfect representation of a narrow bridge that has to be walked and that it's something personal and I'm proud to have these genes in my blood. Stephen Lindner is my grandpa. He was born in Lodz, Poland, on the 17th of May, 1946, but his parents were from Warsaw. He got to Australia from Poland through Belgium in 1950. I think that for his parents, it must have been like crossing a very narrow bridge and finally getting to the other side. They had endured so much pain, but they broke through and finally had a child whom they loved a lot and arrived in a free country for a free life. He only learnt the true history of his parents' lives in the Holocaust and the Warsaw Ghetto when my mum, Adele, did her Roots project in 1990. It must have been extremely hard emotionally for him. He has travelled the world. While travelling, he heard live music. This is a bridge to me because Stephen has a large variety of taste in music as do I. We both make a lot of playlists. Stephen works as a criminal lawyer who specialises in defending people charged with drug offences. I like to hear stories about his past cases. Sometimes they are funny and sometimes they are sad. He and his friends were the first group of volunteers to start Fitzroy Legal Service. Stephen defends people charged with drug offences because at the time when he started, there were not many lawyers doing that. People got convictions because no one defended them, and they did not understand the court system. 
Stephen believes that everyone has a right to be defended. He wanted to be a bridge or connection for people without enough money or who got in trouble to find a lawyer and bring justice to the court system. I love going on holidays with Stephen and playing games. I love his company and just being with him in general. My courteous bond represents my family story. Books contain and represent written words and images allowing people to study and interpret the world. They are carriers of ideas and communication. This is a book of World War II which plays a very important role in my family history, especially my great grandparents. The hand represents the different generations of my family. As the hand gets smaller and smaller, memories of the past, both good and bad, fade. But if you go in reverse, the size of the hand increases, representing the growing and passing of knowledge and my family history to future generations so it's never forgotten. The cut page of the book symbolises the laying of the past, transforming an ordinary book with pages full of words into an inspiring and meaningful creative response. Good evening. My name is Yael and this is my family emblem. I felt the two sides of my family were both part of me and I needed to incorporate both to define my true identity. So together with my family, I combine the meaning of both names and design my emblem. My paternal side of the family is Goldberg, meaning Gold Mountain, so I digitally created a mountain of gold. My maternal side of the family is Kabalo, meaning horse and knight, so I drew a knight on horseback. The emblem on the shield of the knight is the logo of Kabalo from hundreds of years ago. I am proud of my family emblem. It is exactly how I had envisioned it, and it unites my two families as one. For my creative response, I have chosen to make the Chanukia. The eight arms are members of my family. Me, my mum, my dad, my sister, and my grandparents. The Shamash is made up of the flags my family has come from. South Africa, Australia, and Israel. I decided to make a Chanukia out of clay because my maternal great-grandmother was well known for her pottery. A Chanukah represents Chanukah, which is celebrated by all Jews around the world, no matter how religious. And it reminds us miracles are possible. Hi, my name is Bart and this is my creative response. The back of my t-shirt represents the past. So here we've got the Shema, which means we only have one superior and we should always have hope. Here are kids trapped in concentration camps. Here's a concentration camp. These are all the concentration camps and killing centres throughout Europe. And after all this struggle, we finally get liberated. And without all of this, we wouldn't have the Israel that we have today, which is safe and very protective and we have freedom. Thank you. The focus of my creative response is to capture the personality and character traits at the heart of each of my grandparents. I've chosen to create a photographic presentation that demonstrates this. My presentation contains a sequential series of photographs that dynamically displays my grandparents doing something that they love or what makes them who they are. The viewer engages with each panel of photos and follows a brief story in their lives. It has been a pleasure to engage closely with my grandparents and get to know them better. Hello everyone, my name is Lexi Burston. When I heard that we had to talk about someone who has crossed a narrow bridge or Geshe, I immediately thought of my grandmother, Kathy. Catherine Herzeg was born on the 22nd of October 1946 in Budapest, Hungary, and at a time of communism where the government controlled everything you did and owned. When her family escaped Hungary and moved to Australia, she was only 11 and she didn't really know how to speak English. As a foreigner in Australia, she found it difficult to adjust, but she crossed that bridge to establish a happy and successful life for herself. Another bridge she crossed a few years ago was when she faced a battle with cancer. This was a very difficult time for her and our family, but throughout the whole experience she kept up a positive fight. She never gave up and kept on walking across that bridge one step at a time. The moral of the story is that you learn from challenges in life and they teach us to be stronger, braver and more successful. My nonny won her battle with cancer and every day since she is grateful and blessed that she got through this hard time. Today she inspires me and is such a huge role model to me.
everyone, my name is Sabrina Godman and I'll be taking the time to talk about my grandparents and their journey from Ukraine to Australia, who I think resembles the theme Gesher. My grandparents were both born in Ukraine, which is part of the Soviet Union under communist control. Under communism, there was very little religion. There was a lot of discrimination against the Jewish people. This often made it hard for Jews to get into certain university courses or get jobs. Growing up, the only thing my grandparents knew about being Jewish was that they were different. They didn't know much about Jewish culture or religion. Not long after, my mum was born, and at the age of 11, my mum, my grandparents and my great-grandparents decided to move to Australia. The journey was long and difficult, and including spending time in Austria and Italy. Although moving to Australia was very difficult, as it was a different culture and language, this move made it possible for them to learn more about their Jewish roots and enabled their daughter, my mother, to attend a Jewish school, get married in a synagogue and send her children, my sister and I, to a Jewish school. In later years, they also helped bring some of their other relatives out of Ukraine to Australia and closer to Judaism, being able to give my family freedom in Australia as Jewish people. My grandma Raisa Rappaport. Hope you enjoy. We have my great grandmother Hannah Collin. Hello there. My name is Jeremy Levy. Tonight I'm going to speak about my grandma Raisa Rappaport. Only six months old into her life, World War II had begun. She and her family had escaped the Germans. They had to evacuate twice and got very sick while evacuating. My grandma's brother got lost while in the summer camp. The contact was re-established two to three years later. During that time, while they were searching for him, the summer camp was evacuated. The Germans had shot and wounded many children. He was one of them. This had affected both of their lives. A lot because Raisa never got to experience the great life of being a kid. Not only that, Raisa had to leave her dad behind to fight against the Germans. This was very difficult for her because she was very close to her father. My grandma Raisa crossed the very narrow bridge and made it to the other side by living a happy life in Australia. In this photo on the left is my grandmother, Pat, and on the right is my grandfather, Jeff. They are both part of my dad's side. In this photo, this was taken at Canberra in the National Gallery. This is my great, 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 great grandfather, Emmanuel Solomon. Hello, my name is Emily Nudell. Have you ever come across a time in your life where everything has changed, like walking across a narrow bridge? Well, I couldn't think of someone who could better describe this than my dad, Ari. It all started one day in May when my dad, Ari, found out that he had a brain tumour on the right side of his brain. He knew he had to get it removed, but he didn't know when or how bad it would be. After a six hour long operation, they successfully removed the tumour. We were all elated it had gone so well. Unfortunately, the result was a loss of hearing in one ear. For a man whose life passion was music, this was devastating. But he walked across the bridge with his head high, full of determination to listen to music again. I am so proud of my dad and how he still tries his best even when we are in a loud place and he can't hear me, so he pretends to. And that's why he's the best dad ever. He continues to walk across the bridge, as he has shown, by recently buying himself a new speaker system and record player, as he slowly begins to appreciate music again. He even built himself a new home theatre with state-of-the-art speakers and has shared his love of technology and music with our family. Thank you so much for listening. Hello everyone, I'm Eden Voskoboynik and I'll be sharing the story of my grandparents, who I believe have shown great bravery and represent the topic of Geshe. The story begins with a young couple who decided to leave communist Russia. With their little daughter and another baby on the way, they take an enormous risk to escape their hardship and provide a better future for their children. 
countless other Russian Jews will eventually make the same difficult decision. Their opportunity came in 1978 when America offered grain to Russia in return for the Jews. This was the first step, but many challenges lay ahead. Due to the visa process in Russia, both were fired as engineers and needed to work long hours as cleaners to survive. Two and thirteen years later, during which my father was born, they were approved to leave Russia. Their first stop was Rome, where they were treated as political refugees with temporary passports, but they remained stateless. Six long months of relentless bureaucratic obstacles, interviews, immigration tests and injections followed. Eventually, in 1981, they were free to travel to Australia and start life afresh. They found work as a market seller and a childcare worker, and with their resilience and perseverance, they are able to provide everything for their family. This is the story of my babushka and dedushka and the sacrifices they made to travel to Australia in search of a better life. Thanks to them, I am privileged to live in a free country where I can be Jewish without any concern. Thank you and have a good evening. This is my creative response. The person standing on the beach represents me and the Buzz Lightyear toy he is holding represents my brother because one of his favourite things is Toy Story. The dog represents my mum because she's a vet and she takes care of dogs on a daily basis. The airplane that we are all looking up to on the sky represents my dad because he's a Qantas pilot. We're all standing on the beach because Australia is known for its beaches. Hello, my name is Jasmine Mamoff and this is my creative response. The main focus of this response is the aeroplane with the photographs of my family featuring in the windows on each side. My mum's family, the Halilis on the left, and my dad's family, the Mamoffs, on the, are on the right. Personal information including name, date of birth, and place of birth is included on the base of the project, together with the seat number to allow you to locate everyone easily. Underneath the plane, there is a map of the world with flags representing each country where my family members have originated. The plane represents the key mode of the transportation as my family has roots in far different countries. This is my favourite page of my roots project because this is my interview with my great-grandmother Gertrude Knapp. She was a dancer before in Hungary before the war started and I am a dancer now, so I like to think that I continue her legacy. My Roots Project book is also dedicated to her because she has now passed away. For my creative response, I chose to create a dress to symbolise my family's history using materials such as lace, silk and rhinestones. Fabric is a large part of my family's history, with my maternal grandparents opening a fabric store and paternal great-grandmother owning a clothing shop. I use lace as it has many holes and is slightly see-through, representative of the transparent nature of my family, seeing one another everything. It also represents the previous struggles of family during the hardships such as the Holocaust, as along with the gaps in the material. My family lost many to the war. Rhinestone symbolised the bright and successful outcome of my family since the war. Finally, really symbolic of passion, excitement and courage, all qualities of my family that I love about them. Hi, I'm Jasmine Givoni. My favourite page of the Roots book is my family emblem. The stars represent my religion. The buttons represent my grandfather's business and manufacturing with clothing. The quote at the bottom is my grandf grandmother's favourite quote. And the name at the top is, of course, my surname. Overall, I loved how it turned out and I loved how it looked inside my book. Erev tov u mazal tov livnei u livnot ha-mitzvah u li mishpachotihem. Ashir, gesher al nahar goesh, a bridge over troubled water, hu shiram ha-amok vha-meragesh shil ha-tzemet saimen and garfikum. Shir tikva idud u tmiha, המתנגן כבר מעל יובל שנים ולא נס ליחו. הוא שיר אקטואלי ועכשווי הנוגע בכל אדם בשלב זה או אחר של החיים. נו, מה אפשר לעשות? החיים מציבים לנו אתגרים. החשוב ביותר הוא לדעת שבמסע החיים אנחנו לא לבד. חבר'ה, אנחנו לא לבד. 
יש תמיכה, יש תקווה, יש אהבה. יש מי שיעזור לנו לעבור את הגשר מעל נהר גועש. דרך צלחה. Hello, my name is Laron, and this is my speech. I grew up here in Melbourne, with my parents coming from two different countries. My dad grew up in Melbourne, and my mom came from Israel. My family came from all over the world, and that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about the connection of countries from my great-grandfather, and what he went through back in his time. Nachum was born on, in 1915, on the 15th of April, and came from Ukraine and Russia. 
Later on, him and his family moved to Turkey, then to Israel, and then to Australia. His family consisted of two parents, um, Mattis Arba, and his mother, Anna Natiski, and his seven siblings. Moving. Nahum was at the age of three when he first left to go to Turkey because of the growth in anti-Semitism in, in the country and also because of how his family owned a theatre. In Turkey, Nahum's parents worked as, a, as fish cleaners to earn money and feed the large family for five years. In 1924, the family moved to Israel, Tel Aviv. The family lived in small little tents until it was 1929 where the family moved to Australia to live and stay there for the rest of their lives. Later on, Nahum married Rachel Weinstock and had two kids, Marion Arba, who is my grandmother, and Siona Arba, who is my grand great aunt. Marion married Dov Eris and then had my father, Dean, who married Mika Shabib and then gave birth to me, Laurent, and my sister, Neve. So My great-grandfather Morris. In 1939, when the Germans were about to attack Poland, my great-grandfather Morris was only 23 years old. Out of fear for her family, Morris's mother told him to escape to Russia. He had no papers, he had nothing, but walked all the way to Russia by foot, alone. When trying to cross the border, he was arrested as an illegal immigrant and taken to jail in Siberia. In 1942, when Russia joined with the Allies, all prisoners, including Morris, were freed. Now freed, Morris travelled back by foot to his own town, only to find that no one was left. He had no family, no friends, and nowhere to stay. He then went to the forest and joined other Jews who were hiding from the Germans. Eventually, through a difficult journey, Morris, along with other Jews in the forest, made their way from Poland to Israel. Here, Morris joined the British army and went back to Italy to fight the Germans, and finally, when the war ended, he could start to rebuild his life. The theme of Geshe Sameod shows to me that some choices in life are worth taking the risk for, no matter how scary these choices may appear. These risks had a big impact on Morris's life, and I am sure he must have been scared at times. It inspires me to take risks, even if it may seem overwhelming. Hello everyone, my name is May, and I will be telling my auntie's story. Since our theme is Gesho, Bridges, I want to tell you about the struggle that she went through. At a young age, my auntie, Devrat, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. This was very tough for her and her family. After the procedure, she was told she couldn't bear children. This was a choice that was now taken away from her. Although she recovered, the cancer would still be a challenge that would affect her in the future. A bridge that she would need to cross with the support and help of her family. My auntie and I are very close. When I was a child, we spent many hours together. Today I am very certain that the time she spent with me made her realise that the time to cross that bridge had arrived. My auntie and uncle decided to take the path of surrogacy. This was very exciting since she could now have a child. After two surrogacy journeys, she's now a proud mother to a seven-year-old and twins that are two years old. Now she's living in Israel with three children, something that she never thought was possible. Hi, my name is Sunny Polyansky. My grandma's name is Mina Polyansky and she was born in Russia on the 7th of November 1949 during the war. After the war, Mina and her family lived in Moscow. She ate potatoes, meat, milk, vegetables, cabbage and butter. Everything that they ate was made by the villagers. Her favourite thing to eat was the bread. Mina did not have a bat mitzvah because it was not allowed in Russia. 
She had to learn Torah in secret because the Russians did not like Jews and Jewish religion. The Jewish people could not go to the universities or receive the higher education. When I asked my grandma what was the most treasured thing that she had in her life, she did not say the jewellery. Her answer was my family. Despite having a hard time while my grandma was growing up, she managed to keep her Jewish upbringing and values of the family close to her heart. Because she was a high achiever, she managed to finish two universities and accomplish two degrees. I am very proud to have a grandmother like her. When I consider a very narrow bridge, the person that came to my mind is my inspiring grandfather, Matthew Perlstein. He had to risk everything to cross a very narrow bridge that affected his life majorly. On the 18th of October in 1969, life for my grandpa became very difficult. One night he was on his way to pick up my grandmother for a date, but he never arrived. He was found unconscious in a hospital and his family were told that he was not going to survive. My grandfather had been in a terrible car accident and when he woke up after three weeks in a coma, he could not walk or talk. My grandfather spent many challenging months in hospital and over a year of physiotherapy and speech therapy, learning how to walk and talk again. Today when I speak to my grandfather about his experience, I'm left feeling proud of his persistence, his desire to never give up, and if I put myself in his shoes, I realise my own challenges in life are not all that bad. I'm so fortunate to have a grandfather who has taught me to cross my own very narrow bridges. For my creative response, I have decided to create a photographic mosaic image made up of photos of me and my family members and friends. The final image is a photograph of me at my bat mitzvah party in February this year. This idea is special to me because all the photos of my family members and friends make the image of me. It connects me with them as they are all special in my life. I think that the idea is pretty cool because all of my family members makes me who I am today. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Hello there. In this photo you can see a plane destroying a train. I did a plane destroying a train because in World War II while my grandma and her family were evacuating. They travelled by train and the Germans tried to destroy the train to kill everyone that was trying to evacuate from them and get to safety. This has inspired me because I never knew my family had such an interesting story. My creative response consists of many Jewish symbols, each of which have multiple meanings representing my family. This is a man reading the book of my family. The book represents my family's history through the symbols that have emerged from the book. Drawings of both sides of my family have also emerged from the book to show who I'm representing. Within the drawing of the man there are hidden symbols relating to my grandfather's migration that are elevated off the drawing such as the ear being a communist sign to represent my great-grandfather's place of birth being Uzbekistan during the period of being communist, and the kippah representing not only my strong connection to Judaism, but as it is designed like the Polish flag, it represents the rest of my grandparents' place of birth being Poland. I chose to make an animation for my creative response. I felt that an animation gave me the flexibility to show each person on the move each scene has a part of someone's travel story, all leading to Israel at the end and creating my family. I feel that because of my family's many travels, I also have that dream of exploring the world, but I know that Melbourne will always be my home. Hi, my name is Romy Bruns and this is my creative response video. This is a representation of the suitcase my family took from Russia to Australia. I chose to do this as my creative response because it is a very amazing story of how they took so many things and so many photos all the way from Russia to Australia. They crossed many narrow bridges and I can't believe they are still alive to this day. Some of these photos, some of these photos are from many, many generations ago. Thank you for watching. Hello, my name is Ba. 
and this evening I will be talking about my grandfather and his thin bridge of hope. When my when my gra when my grandfather was a teenager, the Second World War broke out. Every Jew in the small town in Hungary, where my grandfather lived, were forced to flee and hide. My grandfather was hiding with both of his parents in their family friend's house. One day, one of the neighbours snitched on my grandfather and his family. Not long after, Nazis broke the window and searched the whole house. Eventually, the Nazis found my grandfather hiding in the basement with two of his parents. The Nazis dragged him to the woods and slaughtered my great-grandparents. The only person left was my grandfather. My grandfather closed his eyes and started saying the Shema. The bullet shot out of the Nazi's rifle and skimmed my grandfather's head. At that moment, my grandfather saw his life flash before his eyes. His natural instinct was to act dead. When the Nazis left, my grandfather ran to his aunt's house. After the war, my grandfather moved to Israel. He got married and had a lot of time to reflect on his past. The end. Thanks for watching. Good evening everyone, my name is Ruby Held. My grandfather Charlie has crossed many bridges in his life on, on his way to leading a free life in Australia. He was born in Warsaw in 1937 and was two years old when the Nazis invaded Poland. My grandfather and his parents left their home in a hurry on the same day that the Nazis invaded. With only a small amount of money, they took a truck, a truck across East Poland to a town called Vilna. The journey was harrowing. My grandfather and his parents crossed the bridge with thousands of other refugees, only to see the bridge being bombed by a German plane a few minutes later. In Vilna, Charlie and his parents managed to get visas through the Japanese ambassador, Chion Sugihara. Sugihara gave many visas to Jews trying to escape Poland. With visas to Japan, my grandfather and his parents managed to get transit visas on the Trans-Siberian Railway. They went across Russia and then on to Japan from the port of Vladivostok. From living in Japan, they were, able, they were then able to move to Shanghai, where they lived for 10 years. From Shanghai, they obtained visas to Australia. The bridge, or Geshe, is very symbolic in my grandfather's life. A bridge that was bombed on the way out of Poland, the symbolic bridge of a Sugihara visa to get out of Poland, and the Australian visas that bridge them to their new life in Australia. Good evening everyone, my name is Jasmine Maimoff and tonight I'll be talking about my grandmother Shola Majedi. Shola was born in Tehran, Iran into a loving family with three brothers and one sister. At 16 she fell in love with a man and got married at 18. She had two kids and lived happily in Tehran. When she was 22, Iran had a revolution. The Shah was overthrown by an uprising of religious Muslims. They established some very strict rules and made life very hard for many Iranians. Shola's friends immigrated to the West. Shola and her husband were thinking about escaping, but Shola had a stroke at age 28 due to the stressful time of the Iran and Iraq war. After the stroke, she could not move her arm or her leg and she could not talk. She had to live in her mother's house during rehab, far away from her kids. As soon as she was able to walk without assistance, her husband arranged for her and her two kids to flee Iran to pursue a better life as refugees in Denmark. Even though she had a stroke, she sacrificed her health and left her family to help her daughters. Shola's story relates to the theme Geshe because bridges have a very strong structure and can carry heavy loads. Her strength and dedication provided a bridge for, to a better life for her two daughters, my mum and my auntie. A bridge also connects two sides together and protects you from the troubled waters below. To me, Shola embodies all these qualities. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your evening. Hello 
everyone, this is a speech about my booba. My booba Helen Rosen is the bridge to my happiness. She's always been my special guest share, my support who is there and a person who is able to help me cross over and get to the other side when something makes me upset. She is the most loving and positive person in the whole world. Her glass is always half full. My Bubba's parents, Frieda and Pesach Bloom, came to Melbourne from Poland just before the Second World War. They settled down in Carlton with many other Jewish immigrant families. My Bubba grew up and went to school there, and as she told me in her interview, she had a very happy childhood. Although she was personally spared from the atrocities of the Holocaust. She vividly remembers hearing these horrifying stories from survivors. These stories, as well as the anti-Semitism she sometimes experienced as a young girl at school, left a permanent impression, resulting in her wanting her children to go to a Jewish school, to receive a Jewish education and mix with other Jewish children. All while being safe and free from the anti-Semitism, the bridge my booba started to build passed on to my mum, leading now to me and also my brother attending Bialik. My booba is also a core part of the bridge to my Jewish life. Celebrating and dancing with my booba at my bat mitzvah was a highlight and something that I will always cherish. As far back as I can remember, every Yom Tov and Shabbat has been celebrated with and made special by her. It is our family tradition we always go to her house and she always makes a delicious and huge feast. My booba is the best cook and always makes my favourite foods. She spoils me by giving me everything I want, but most importantly and unconditionally her love. There is nothing she wouldn't do for me. I love spending time with her whenever I can. Our times are truly precious. Hello, my name is Dion Zuckerman. I am proud to share the story of my papa, Eddie Kutner AM. He was the second son born March 26, 1947 to Anka and Chaim Kutner in Germany. Displaced after the war, my great-grandparents and their young family settled in Germany for five years, soon after moved to Poland, Israel, and finally settling in Australia. In Melbourne, they lived on Glen Huntley Road in a one-bedroom studio above their tailor shop, in which they worked hard to support themselves as newly found refugees. They were hit by tragedy when his brother passed away in a car accident on the way to Sydney. It was then that my great-grandparents lost their zest for life and my papa was forced into dropping out of school to provide for him and his parents. Soon after, Eddie met his future wife, Helen Gradman. Helen would give him support and a place to stay. Helen was the motivation my grandfather needed to keep him on track. In 1972 and 1974, Chaim and Anka Kutner passed away. After tragically losing his parents, Eddie and Helen worked to build their life together. He had a narrow opportunity and a tough upbringing, but he crossed the Geshel and became successful. He has been a role model and inspiration to me and everyone around him. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ruby Held, and for my creative response, I'm doing a calendar. In this calendar, each month will have a special recipe for my family. I chose this as my creative response because it's a great way of showing my family recipes and what month they should be cooked in. Here is a sample of one of the recipes from the calendar. It's my Nana Joan Held's pot roast. The thing I enjoyed most about doing this family tree was probably learning about my family's past and history. I also had a lot of fun talking with my parents and grandparents about it and them telling me and explaining me stuff that I didn't know before about. And just, it was overall such a fun, fun experience. The main picture is one of my favorite pictures as a kid. 
and all the little pictures make up the big picture are made of certificates, documents, birth certificates, also my family and extended family, photos of them, my family trees, milestones in my life, important things to me, and all the little pictures like represent tiles in a mosaic and when you put all the tiles together it will form the big picture as this represents all the little pictures of me form the big picture and what I'm made of. I really liked doing my family emblem as I had a lot of ideas and information to put in it. I like being creative and designing things so doing my family emblem was very fun, interesting and cool. This is my creative response. Each block represents someone in my immediate family. There are four sides of each block, one with a small story, one with their family tree, one with a photo of their footy team, and one with a flag of the country that they were born in. I think that these blocks definitely represent me and my family and how they, um, and how we all connect. Our B'nai Mitzvah theme is a quotation from the Hasidic Rabbi Nachman of Bretzlav. He lived in Eastern Europe in the late 18th century. He died at the age of 48. Translation. The entire world is a narrow bridge. The essential thing is to have no fear at all. It's a wonderful message. The world is a bridge, not a strong one, but a narrow one. It can be a bit scary, but cross it without fear. Now that sounds great, but there's a problem. It's actually a misquote. Now the misquote's fine. We've been misquoting it for centuries and we'll continue to misquote it for centuries to come. But Rabbi Stephen Arnold, an American rabbi, spotted the misquote. Let me explain. The first bit's fine. All the world is a narrow bridge. The misquote, though, is in the second half. It doesn't say, The essential thing is not to fear at all. In fact, what it says is, The essential thing is not to become paralyzed by your fear. That's quite a change in emphasis. The essential thing is not to become paralyzed by your fear. In other words, you will have fear. You will be fearful, but don't let the fear own you. Don't let it paralyze you. I remember hearing from a war hero a while back. What struck me? was the fear that he described. What struck me was that heroes experience fear as much as anyone else. They aren't superheroes who are fearless, they're fearful, they're scared and frightened, but they're, they're able to not let it paralyze them. Rabbi Elias Liebman quotes Thich Nhat Han, a Vietnamese Zen Buddhist monk, teacher, author, poet, and peace activist. Fear keeps us focused on the past or worried about the future. If we can acknowledge our fear, we can realize that right now we're okay. Right now, today, we're still alive. Our bodies are working marvelously. Our eyes can still see the beautiful sky and our ears can still hear the voices of our loved ones. But I for I want to share something with you. During this year, we as a college have faced many challenges and fears. We had a summer like no other. We faced a situation on Chavaya, year 10 Israel experience like no one that we had ever faced before. As I flew on my own to Israel to help manage a crisis, I experienced fear. Would the children be okay? Would our reputation as a school and as a values-driven community survive intact? Would I be okay? With this global pandemic, there has been real fear in our community. Are we safe? Are our children safe? Are our staff members safe? How do we navigate and lead through this in a transparent and values-driven way? And in your families, there will have been countless similar conversations and choices as there will be in the months ahead. Never have Rabbi Nachman's true words been more relevant. Not the misquoted ones, but the true ones. 
The essential thing is not to become paralyzed by your fear. We can become paralyzed, we can freeze, we can stop, or we can take a breath, we can take a step back. We can look down at our roots, across at our community and upwards towards our values and make decisions. Consider the emblem of our school, the Bialik tree. Did you notice that it has two roots, one for family and one for community? Did you notice that it has 18 leaves, 18 deliberate leaves, as visioned by our life governor, Jeffrey Mayamoff, 18 for Chai for life? Did you notice that our mission, Dirkhuna Oz, step forth with courage, is step forth, move forward, do not be paralyzed by fear, acknowledge the fear as real and necessary and even healthy, but don't be paralyzed by it. You are now becoming B'nai Mitzvah. You join the Jewish people as an equal, as a young adult, as one of the 600,000 souls who left Egypt, as one of those who would be counted in a census to be a good, responsible member of our society. You no longer have the excuses of a child. You now have the responsibilities of an adult. You can no longer be paralyzed by fear. You need to look down at your roots, across to your family and up to your values and own it and step forth. Mazal tov on your bar and bat mitzvahs. Whether you're laning in shul, in person or virtually, saying the haftarah, giving a talk or quite simply, but most challengingly, becoming a don mitzvah, a master or mitzvah of the mitzvahs of goodness. I wish you luck, happiness, health, good deeds in everything that you set your heart to. Know this, that the path to success, to greatness, to popularity, to what you wish for, is by being a menschlich member of a community. And if you are looking for the secret to life, this is it, quite simply, be a mensch. And the way to be a mensch is to see what's not quite right in your family, in your friendship groups online. Do the right thing, not to the popular thing. To help you with this, I offer you the priestly blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. May God lift up his face upon you and give you peace. B'nai Mitzvah, we are grateful tonight to our Parents Association and its wonderful president, Sally Robin. The Parents Association have gifted you a siddur. We thank them for their thoughtful generosity. And as a cross-communal school, you've had a choice of siddurim, orthodox, progressive, chabad, conservative, rather than defaulting to one type. We recognize that we each practice our Judaism in different ways. We want to support the choices that you and your families make. More than this, you'll now be using these Sudarim as part of your learning in school. How wonderful to be the only school in the Southern Hemisphere in which students use the Siddur from their own shul. Our religious pluralism is expressed in a real and living way through our communal gatherings and our communal prayers. Thank you to our Parents Association for supporting us. You also have albums for the Roots Projects from the UIA and Sadaka boxes from the JNF. We thank our parents, the JNF, the UIA, for their gifts. They are gifts for your soul and gifts from our Jewish homeland. Use them all with joy, mazel, and menschlichkeit. Parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, family and friends, I wish you all mazel tov on the B'nai Mitzvah of these wonderful young people here. May they be a credit to you, a source of joy. May you shat nachis for years to come. Shana Tava, and I wish you a wonderful and safe holiday. Thank you. Oh, hello there. Know your eyes are not deceiving you. This isn't Noah Burrows, year seven student. It's Mr. Gober. I'd like to take this opportunity to give a few thank yous. I'd like to thank Rig and Eloise from IT who've made this very unique B'nai Mitzvah ceremony even possible. I'd like to thank everyone from communications, Julian, Dahlia and Zach Bloom for working with the band and the singers in an outstanding and exceptional way. Rachel, none of this could have been possible without you. Dan, your guidance has been essential. Jeremy, what you've added to this night wouldn't have made it any, any worthwhile without it. Karen, Dahlia, and Andrea, the class teachers, you were the engine room behind this entire project.
Toby, as a class teacher and new level coordinator, has put everything together. Our students, thank you. But finally, and most importantly, our families. For Keavot, the ethics of our fathers say, Bata Ulan Ataulech. Know where you've come from and where you're going. Indeed, it is not random that you are here tonight. You have all reached this stage because of the choices made throughout countless generations before you. The choice to keep the flame of our heritage alive regardless of the cost. As we have heard tonight, those costs have often been very high. But those who came before you sacrificed parts of their life and at times their entire life so that you, literally you, would have what you have had tonight. Know where you have come from so that you walk with pride and purpose all of your days. Now, Kuna Oz, step forth with courage, knowing that the legacy of the past is not a curse, but the greatest of gifts. I would like to end by giving you all a blessing recounted in our Talmud in Masechet Brachot. May you live to see your world fulfilled. May you be our link to future worlds. And may your hope encompass all of the generations to be. May your heart conceive with understanding May your mouth speak wisdom and your tongue be stirred with sounds of joy. May your gaze be straight and true and may your eyes be lit with Torah's lamp. Your face aglow with heaven's radius and your lips expressing words of knowledge and your inner self a light with righteousness. And may you always be eager to rush to hear the words of one more ancient than yourself. Mazal tov.
The B'nai Ceremonies. In 2011, I flew back from Alice Springs to be at my first B'nai Ceremony, and I thoroughly looked out forward to the three nights and I've enjoyed all of them. In 2012, Jeremy arrived at Bialik one week before B'nai, early in September, and he amazed the staff and parents as he gave three separate speeches over the three days and has continued to do this each year. The middle school has grown in numbers and of this year, we have 334 students, the most that the middle school has ever had. Following on from this, we have 17 new students who have come into year seven. Whilst this has been a difficult year, these new students have been outstanding and I have been impressed by the way they have worked in and out of the school, particularly in Digital Bialik. The work for the Year 7 students' B'nai ceremonies has been incredible and I am proud of all that they have achieved. In 2020, we will see a unique and wonderful group of Year 7 students who will be able, in time, to tell their friends, parents, staff members, colleagues, and their own children in due course that they were the year of COVID-19. I would like to acknowledge the following people who have organised the B'nai ceremonies. Andrew Lipschutz, Karen Glantz, Dahlia Gerfunkel, Zach Bloom, Julian DeBant, Eloise Fletcher, Rig Villilaris, Zach Gomo, Dan Strait, Rachel Israel, and last but not least, Toby Mack, who has worked tirelessly throughout his first year as the Year 7 Level Coordinator. Well done, Toby, and congratulations to everyone.